Welcome to Dave's Daily Crypto Take. Today is Thursday, January 13th, 2022. Uh, let's welcome the new year. Thank you so much to all my subscribers. Thank you so much to all my supporters. I wish you guys a happy new year and let's make this crypto bull run for the making. But before that, let's take a look at the prices. At number one, BTC is at $43,937.48, up 2.39%. Ethereum at number two, $3,375.41, up 3.75%. BNB number three, $487.57, up 4.74%. Tether at number four, $1. Solana, number five, $151.61, up 7.24%. USD coin, number six, 99 cents. Cardano, at number seven, $1.30, up 10.05%. XRP, number eight, 79 cents, up 3.79%. Number nine, Terra, $82.40, up 12.24%. And last but not least, number 10, Polkadot, at $27.32, up 7.09%. Let's take a look at the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried. That could be a buying opportunity. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. So today, what we got is extreme fear at 21. Yesterday was extreme fear at 22. Last week was extreme fear at 15. And last month was extreme fear at 21. Let's take a look at our five articles today. Article number one is... Bitcoin fell below $40,000 on Monday, just, uh, just months after hitting an all-time high. Article number two, Bitcoin and Ethereum are heading for a death cross, should you care? Article number three, six cryptos you can mine at home in 2022. Bitcoin trading present likely lost money for El Salvador. And last but not least, the main topic today is crypto CEO becomes one of the world's richest billionaires. All right. Before we get into the articles, just want to say thank you so much to everyone that's been shouting out to me, uh, messaging me, saying Happy New Year, good luck with the new podcast and the YouTube videos. Again, this is all unbiased news. So if you have any family or friends that want to hear any crypto takes and crypto news alerts about unbiased news, for example, for crypto and against crypto, please send them my way. It's Dave's Daily Crypto Take on Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcasts and on the YouTube space. Uh, you can like, share, and subscribe. So let's get into it, guys. Article number one is... Bitcoin fell below $40,000 on Monday, just months after hitting an all-time high. Investors were on edge on Monday following Bitcoin plummeting below the $40,000 mark. Hit its lowest price since September, the world's largest crypto has had months of hot and cold streaks, hitting a record high of $69,000 just months earlier in November. The latest drop now has analysts wondering just what 2022 will have in store for Bitcoin and crypto. As a whole, Bud White, Chief Product Officer at Tassin, explains what's next for Bitcoin and what other cryptos should be on the lookout for. So, Bitcoin fell below 40000 Did you guys buy the dip? Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Article number two is Bitcoin and Ethereum are heading for a death cross. Should you care? The technical term death cross sounds scary as hell. As Bitcoin and Ethereum are poised to hit one, what do crypto traders think? So in brief, three points in this article. Number one, death cross is a technical term from the world of stock trading. Two, it signifies a rare meeting of the 50 and 200 day price averages. And number three, death crosses are never good, but crypto experts are not particularly worried. A pricing event called a death cross looms for the two biggest cryptocurrencies and barring a serious rally could occur later this week. The term death cross sure has a scary ring to it, but should crypto holders really be worried? Decrypt consulted some veteran crypto traders to find out, but first let's cl clarify what exactly a death cross is. The term is a technical one from the world of conventional stock investing and describes an event when two moving averages, the 50-day and 200-day intersect. Moving averages represent the average closing price over a certain period of time. In theory, chart lines that represent those averages should rarely or never meet. That's because the 200-day average contains the 50-day one, but also represents a trend that is four times longer. Whatever price pops or dips occur during the 50-day period should largely be smoothed out by the longer trend. 
if the two lines intersect, it means the price has moved up or down so dramatically that the 50-day trend crosses the 200-day trend on the price chart. If the 50-day line crosses the 200-day one in an upward direction, that's a golden cross. But if it happens on a downward slide, it's a death cross. You can view the looming death cross events in the chart below from Bloomberg. We've added a red arrow for where the 50 and 200 day averages for Ethereum are poised to meet and a blue one for Bitcoin. As you can see, the gap between the lines is narrower for Bitcoin so that death cross is more likely to happen first. If death cross does occur, does that mean the price of the asset in question, be it a token or a stock, is doomed? In the case of a conventional stock or the stock market as a whole, the appearance of the death cross is bad news indeed, since such events over history have preceded a number of major and prolonged downturns. And some traders treat the advent of a death cross as a trigger to get out of a position before things get much worse. The story is a little different when it comes to Bitcoin. While hitting a death cross is hardly a good thing, the original cryptocurrency has experienced one several times in its 11-year history, most recently in June of 2021, and somehow the original cryptocurrency has emerged just fine. That was the sentiment from analysts at two major crypto firms that hold billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Traders certainly watch staple technical indicators with the 50 100 and 200 day moving averages being key ones. Email the person at the Genesis trading desk. The death cross is on the radar, but it doesn't appear to be a significant event. A person at another big crypto firm who declined to be identified for compliance reasons was likewise fairly unconcerned. People make it out to be a big, scary, bearish event. But last time it happened, the market bottomed out and shortly after pumped back up said the analyst by email. Similarly, in June 21, the market dipped after hitting 64K, fueled by leverage. This time around, the sell-off is probably due to the Fed's plans to reduce their balance sheet. Kyle Samani, the founder of Multicoin Capital and a longtime crypto trader, was more blunt. TA is garbage, he wrote in a Twitter message, using the trader shorthand for technical analysis. All three of the commenters have a vested interest in the price of crypto remaining healthy, so skeptics might discount their remarks as unduly optimistic. Nonetheless, the price trajectory of both Bitcoin and Ethereum, despite numerous pops and crashes over time and despite their terrible start to 2022, have climbed steadily skyward in the long term, so it is unlikely another encounter with a death cross would spell lasting doom. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. All right, article number three, six cryptos you can mine at home in 2022. You don't need an expensive ASIC or even the latest high-end GPU to mine these cryptocurrencies at home. The cryptocurrency mining is incredibly expensive. It requires you to spend thousands in buying expensive GPUs or ASICs, arranging them together and spending more to buy power supplies and other computer components. However, not all cryptocurrencies require this much hashing power. At its core, mining is all about solving complex mathematical problems. For every complex equation solved, miners receive a small fee for their efforts. Mining is important as it helps verify transactions on the blockchain. However, the concept of diminishing marginal returns means that miners get paid less and less over time. However, if you have a semi-decent GPU or better, you can mine too. So, here are the six best cryptocurrencies that you can mine at home in 2022. Number one, Monero XMR. Monero is one of the easiest cryptocurrencies to mine using a home computer. Monero is based on the crypto note protocol and utilizes the random X hash function to create increasingly complicated mathematical equations. You can either mine solo or join a mining pool where your computer's resources will be used in tandem with others in the pool to mine XMR. This means frequent payouts, though you'll have to pay a fee to join the pool. Of course, you can mine solo as well, but your hash rate needs to be high to find a block. In some cases, that can take months. Monero can be mined using both a CPU or a GPU. Those GPUs are obviously more efficient and faster. To mine using a, GP, a CPU, you need dedicated software such as XM Rig or CS Miner. The good thing about Monero is that it's ASIC resistant, so all miners only use consumer grade hardware to mine it. This makes mining competition a bit fairer too. Number two, Litecoin, LTC. So 
Litecoin is one of the oldest cryptocurrencies out there, with many referring to it as a viable sec secondary option to Bitcoin. It's an open source P2P digital currency at the time of writing. Each miner gets 12.5 Litecoin per block, which halves every four years. Mining LTC is a great idea as it's widely accepted and because it's based on the script protocol, which negates the need to invest in ASIC chips. Since it's memory intensive, mining with the GPU is highly recommended. The reason why LTC is a great choice for mining is simply because it's less volatile than many other altcoins. It's also readily accepted on all major exchanges and has relatively low transaction fee. You don't have to worry about the price tanking overnight with this one, although obviously anything can happen in crypto. Number three, Ethereum Classic, ETC. Ethereum Classic is built on the Ethereum blockchain and is the fourth version of Ethereum, originally forming as a network hack back in 2016. Ethereum became the newer version, with Ethereum Classic being the original. ETC is an open source cryptocurrency that you can mine easily at home. It uses a slightly modified mining algorithm that Ethereum known as ETC Hash. It supports smart contracts and decentralized apps, so it has plenty of practical use. You'll need to sign up for a wallet to mine this cryptocurrency, and it requires a powerful GPU. Block rewards are set at 3.2 ETC, so it's a good cryptocurrency to start mining with. Number four, Dogecoin. Doge. When started as the first meme coin, now has a market cap exceeding $20 billion. Dogecoin received lots of attention from people like Elon Musk and Mark Cuban, which directly contributed to its near meteoric rise in the crypto world. Unlike most other cryptocurrencies with a finite supply, Dogecoin is infinite, so don't think of it as a viable hedge against modern day inflation. Like Litecoin, Doge also uses script protocol for mining. This makes the mining landscape a bit more competitive and fair. Obviously, that doesn't mean you can mine it on a gaming laptop. You can mine Dogecoin using software like GUI Miner or CUDA Miner and a powerful GPU and CPU pairing. Number five, Zcash. Zek. Zcash was explicitly designed with ASIC resistance in mind, making it much easier to mine for people using regular hardware. Zek is another popular crypto that you can use to send and receive money quickly and efficiently. For miners, this is a great choice to be in with. You can easily join mining pools to get a steady payout, and miners also have the option to shield their Zek from its creation using a shielded coin base. This not only enhances privacy, but also means that miners can get their reward mining rewards transferred immediately to relevant wallet address. Of course, you can mine Zek all solo using software such as the EWBF Zcash miner. However, to generate some tangible rewards quickly, it's recommended you start with a mining pool first. Number six, Bitcoin Gold, BTG. Bitcoin Gold has similar fundamentals to Bitcoin, which essentially means it's a spin-off of the world, world's most popular cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is mined using specialized mining equipment, whereas Bitcoin Gold was designed specifically for mining using regular hardware. Bitcoin Gold is quite popular, and you can easily buy it from any major exchange. For miners, Bitcoin Gold is a great choice as it uses the EquiHash algorithm, which is ASIC-resistant but requires a decent GPU to start mining. In addition, there are a bunch of different Bitcoin gold mining pools that you can join to distribute the workload and receive mining rewards quickly. You don't necessarily need a heavy mining rig to start mining BTG. People are mining it using NVIDIA's GTX 970s too. So you don't need an ASIC to mine crypto. The cryptocurrencies on this list show that it's possible to mine cryptocurrency at home without paying out for an expensive ASIC miners or investing your life savings in a GPU mining rig. These cryptos are the tip of the iceberg too. You'll find plenty of other cryptocurrencies you can mine at home if you search around. So comment down below. And let me know what you guys think about this. Six cryptos that you can start mining with at home in 2022. Comment down below and let me know if you are a miner or have you ever mined any other cryptos before. All right. Before we get into round two of the articles, just want to say thank you so much to everyone. Uh, I've been looking at the analytics so far. And of course, we've been taking a New Year's hiatus, but we're back into 2022. So we're going to get back into daily podcasts and daily YouTube videos. So again, check me out on Spotify, Google, and um, Apple Music. 
And if you guys can, check me out on YouTube. No matter what, we'll try and do unbiased news. So again, Dave's Daily Crypto Take. Okay, article number four is Bitcoin trading uh, president likely most likely lost money for El Salvador. Government's process for buying Bitcoin is shrouded in secrecy. Nation's Bitcoins worth less than 14% than average acquisition cost. So El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele, is probably the only head of state in the world who uses public funds to trade Bitcoin with his phone. So far, it appears he's lost money. That's because the process is shrouded in secrecy. Though the country has bought at least 1,391 Bitcoins based on what the 40-year-old Bukele has said on Twitter, the purchase Bukele says he's made would have cost the Central American country about $71 million based on an average acquisition price of $51,056 per token using the date and time of his tweets. As calculated by Bloomberg, assuming the government has held the digital coins, they're now worth about $61 million at Wednesday's price at 14% loss. El Salvador began buying Bitcoin in September after Bukele pushed through a plan to make the nation the first to consider it legal tender. Bitcoin was trading around $50,000 then, and the nation continued to buy as the token approached a record high of almost $69,000 in early November. It has seen since lost as much as 40% of its value. Even with the slump in Bitcoin, any likely trading losses are dwarfed by the plunge in the nation's bonds, which has raised El Salvador's financing costs. The country's overseas uh, dollar bonds posted the world's worst performance in 2021, as investors were spooked by Bukele's unorthodox economic management and the nation's experiment with Bitcoin. The government didn't respond to requests for comment. The yield on the nation's $800 million of dollar bonds due January 2023 rose to 34% on Tuesday, from less than 9% a year ago. An extended fund facility with the International Monetary Fund has not come to fruition due to the multilateral lenders' concerns over Bitcoin. So, buying the dips. Bukele has become a celebrity in the Bitcoin community, buying on price dips and promising to build a tax-free Bitcoin city on the country's coast. His government said it will fast-track citizenship for investors who buy $100,000 or more of a proposed blockchain bond expected to be issued this year on Blockstream Corp. Liquid Network. He has even engaged in Twitter wars with Bitcoin critics calling Johns Hopkins economist Steve Hankey an idiot after Hankey said Bukele's plan to mine Bitcoin with geothermal energy from an inactive volcano was antics from a narcissistic president who is full of hot air. Finance Minister Alejandro Zelaya said last week that the government had converted some of the Bitcoins purchased back into dollars, but didn't elaborate. He said a team of government officials decides when to buy dips. Bukele's administration plans to build a public animal hospital with any trading profits, he said. The government Bitcoin address is a secret. The government says it has a $150 million fund at state-run bank Bandicel to back Bitcoin transactions, but doesn't publish information about it. Opacity surrounds everything related to it, said Ricardo Castaneda, an El Salvador-based economist for the Central America Fiscal Studies Institute. There's no official information about the amount of Bitcoin the government has purchased, the price they paid, or how much is in reserve, he said. So, funding gap. El Salvador adopted the cryptocurrency as legal tender alongside the dollar in September. And millions of people have downloaded the country's digital wallet app called Chivo. Nathalie Marshik, head of emerging market sovereign research at Stifo Nicholas and Co. in New York, estimates that the government will have a funding gap of $1 billion this year. The government has fairly large financing needs. What money is it used to day trade BTC with? She said. I could understand why he, the Salvadoran taxpayer, would be peeved about this, especially given the recent Bitcoin nosedive. It is hard to justify a government trading such a risky asset with taxpayers' money in such opaque circumstances. So what do you guys think about this article? Bitcoin trading president likely lost money for El Salvador. Comment down below. Let me know if you think Bukele is a genius or a fraud. All right. Article number five, the main topic today is crypto CEO becomes one of the world's richest billionaires. A cryptocurrency CEO has become one of the richest people on earth. Zhang Peng Zhao, CZ, 
who runs the crypto exchange Binance, has joined the ranks of the world's top billionaires with an estimated net worth of at least $96 billion, according to new calculations from the Bloomberg Billionaires Index published Monday. Zhao's projected fortune now rivals that of Oracle founder Larry Ellison and surpasses that of Mukesh Ambani, an Indian tycoon whose fortune has also soared over the last two years. The ascent of the Chinese-Canadian entrepreneur is emblematic of the rapid creation of wealth in the fast-moving world of digital currencies. Last year, other crypto founders also enjoyed huge gains as the value of virtual coins rallied, with Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin and Coinbase founder Brian Armstrong both becoming billionaires. Sam Bankman-Fried, CEO of FTX, another cryptocurrency exchange that has been backed by Binance, pointed Tuesday to an unprecedented amount of wealth creation that has occurred in the industry over the last few years. I think there's a lot of people who are trying to figure out what to do with that, Friedman, who himself is a young billionaire, said during a virtual onstage discussion at the Asian Financial Forum in Hong Kong. In a post on Twitter Monday, Zhao has also appeared to acknowledge the distinction. Don't worry about rankings. Focus on how many people you can help, he wrote. Zhao followed up in another tweet Tuesday saying, unpopular opinion, instead of wealth rankings, there should be a ranking of charity and philanthropy efforts. A Binance spokesperson told CNN Business that CZ intends to give away most of his wealth, even 99% of his wealth, just like other entrepreneurs and founders. In recent years, other famous business leaders, such as Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, have signed the Giving Pledge, an initiative started by Warren Buffett and Bill and Melinda Gates to encourage the world's richest to donate the bulk of their fortunes to charity. Zhao launched Binance in 2017, gradually building it into one of the world's largest crypto exchanges. According to a company blog post, the executive grew up in an immigrant family in Canada and previously worked at McDonald's to help support his household. After studying computer science at McGill University, he worked on trading software for the Tokyo Stock Exchange and Bloomberg. He then learned about Bitcoin in 2013 during a game of poker, after which he decided to go all in on crypto by dedicating his life to it. According to Binance, he even sold his apartment to buy Bitcoin. Like other exchanges, Binance has faced significant regulatory hurdles around the world in recent months, including a ban in the United Kingdom and other restrictions in countries like Canada. Zhao has publicly addressed the setbacks, writing in an open letter last year that clear regulations are critical for continued growth. More regulations are, in fact, positive signs that an industry is maturing, he added, because this sets the foundation for a broader population to feel safe to participate in crypto. So what do you guys think about this article? Crypto CEO becomes one of the world's richest billionaires. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. All right. So before we head out, let's take a look at the prices one last time and see where we are at. Number one, BTC is at $43,675. Ethereum, $3,345. BNB, $481. Tether, $1. Solana, $149. USD coin, $0.99. Cents. Cardano, $1.33. XRP, $0.79. Cents. Terra, $80. And Polkadot at $26. So there you guys have it. Thank you so much for making it this far into the YouTube video and also podcast. Again, catch me at Dave's Daily Crypto Take on all podcasts, Apple, Spotify, and Google. And if you're in YouTube space, please like, share, and subscribe. Until the next one, please have a great crypto day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.